Hey, what's up, guys? This is Guy here with KB Trainings. Welcome to the lesson number 2.4.6. This is for our course on the Cisco CCNA 200 uh, 301. We are still learning spinal tree protocol and today we are talking about port fast. Port fast is a feature of spinal tree protocol that Cisco requires us to know if you go under 2.5.c on the exam blueprint you're going to see that Cisco is asking us to know the port fast benefits and that's what we're talking about today. So if you're watching this on YouTube, this is part of a course that I'm creating on kbtrainings.com forward slash CCNA. If you are an IT professional, if you want to become an IT professional and you want to boost your career, you need to pass the CCNA exam and that's what I'm helping you doing in this course here that I'm still producing. And if you are a professional, don't forget to subscribe to this channel because I share with you a lot of projects as a network professional and also like the video to support the channel. Spanning tree has a lot of features or a lot of options that you can play with to fine tune your network or your topology. You want your topology to be efficient and to be stable. Some of those options are or features are listed here. First of all, we have port fast. This is the one we're talking about today. I'm going to tell you what it does and how is it good for um, for the efficiency in our um, topology. And inside port fast, you can have things like BPDU guard and BPDU filter. I'm going to talk a little bit about them, even though Cisco really doesn't require us to learn this. And we have options like uplink fast, backbone fast, loop guard. These are many options that you can play with with spanning tree. But at the CCNA level, Cisco knows that we already have enough to learn at this point. So we don't have to go deep into these other uh, spanning tree protocol features or, or options. We are just going to talk about port fast in this lesson. So to explain you what is port fast, I need to bring packet tracer here because I think it's much easier if I just bring you um, uh, a packet tracer so we can have some switch and uh, a PC right here. So first of all, we saw last time when we saw the different port states, we saw that when we have, in this case, I know we have port villain spanning to protocol because we this, this is the default mode that comes in a switch like this. So when you have a switch and you have a, a switch port, that switch port is usually in a disabled state. When there is nothing connected to it, there's nothing happening, it doesn't participate in the spanning tree protocol algorithm. So when you connect something to that port, that port will go through different states before forwarding the traffic. So the next state will be the blocking state. It will block first, and then it will go to the listening states where it listens to the network, receives the BPDU and everything. And then we go to the learning states. And then finally, if it wants to forward the traffic, we'll go to the forwarding states. This will take 15 seconds. This will take 15 seconds. So this is like 30 seconds that you are wasting just going through all these different states. And this is how we should do it normally because the purpose of these different state is to avoid the loop. The switch port will be listening to the to the BPDUs, will be reading the BPDUs, and the switch will decide if the specific port should pass traffic or not, if passing traffic will create a loop or not. If there is a potential of a loop, the switch will block that port. If there is no potential of a loop, the switch will let that port pass traffic without any problem. But let's see, if we have another switch here and another switch there. We're talking about a loop in perspective of other switches only, not end devices, not computers, not servers. So if we have an interface right here that is going to be connected to a computer or to a server, why do we have to follow all these rules if we don't have any risk on that port? And that's where port fast comes in. Because when you go in your office in the morning and you see an Ethernet, um, an Ethernet outlet, you just grab your cable, you connect to the outlet, you expect to get an IP address, you expect to be connected to the Internet right away. You don't want to wait for 30 seconds or more to just get connected. So that's why a good engineer will put port fast on the interface that's going to a cubicle where we don't expect any switch to be connected there. So you activate port fast to make it quicker. So the port will go from disable all the way to forwarding right away. 
without waiting or without wasting any time. All the other ports in your topology can still be normal, can still wait before porting traffic. But anyway, before doing any design, any good design, you need to plan everything. If you have like a 24 port switch, you need to know that, uh, let's say you have, you have a 20 port for switch, you need to know that maybe the port one, two, three, and four are going to be connected to other switches. So in this case, you should activate port fast on all these different ports. And you should leave one, two, three, and four in a regular state where they should do the disable blocking listening. And that's how you plan things. There is also another option that we're going to talk about later on, which is BPD guard. That will help you prevent anybody from connecting a switch because if someone brings a switch, that port will be disabled right away. And we're going to see that. So briefly, uh, port fast helps you save time. Let's try to add a link between this um, computer and the switch. And we're going to see how long it's going to take for the switch to come up. And you know already, it's gonna take 30 seconds. So you don't wanna wait 30 seconds. You need to enable port fast if you want to be connected quickly. Because 30 seconds might be a lot for someone who's in hurry or for, for, for the device that really needs to get access to a certain thing inside your network. And I'm going to change this port later on to enable port fast on fast ethernet zero slash one. And you're going to see how it's gonna be much quicker to get access to the network. And okay, we just reached 30 seconds and now it's active and you don't want to wait that long. And um, let me just build a quick topology here. I'm actually going to build this in a, in a very um, recommended way where we have access switches down here. Where are the switches? Okay, right there. All right, so these are access switches. And then I'm going to put some distribu distribution switches here. And then um, I'll probably take this big one. And then um, uh, core. All uh, right, so let me connect these different switches. Okay, okay, okay. So I'm going to make this, I'm going to make this core uh, switch uh, the root for uh, for our topology or maybe we can we can make roots right here here yeah. so on this end let me add a server okay so i know that this is going to a server and i also know that it's going to be connected to fast ethernet zero slash two so what i'm going to do first is go and enable port fast on that port so i would do um enable um conf t interface fast ethernet zero slash two and the command is spanning tree port fast enter that's it so that port will be coming up right away if i connect it to the server so let me do it now fast connected to zero slash two right away it's green it doesn't have to wait it doesn't have to go through all the different states and this is what you get from having port fast activated on a certain port. So let's go back to our theory and uh, keep reading. All right, so as I said, the spanning tree, uh, port fast is the spanning tree feature that causes a switch or trunk port to enter spanning tree forwarding state immediately by passing all the different things. And you can use port fast on interfaces that are connected to end devices. So if you know that I will never have a switch connected to this port, put it on port fast because it doesn't help to have all those states come in. And there's also another benefit that we're going to talk about uh, in the next slide. What are the benefits of port fast? First of all, you have a quicker access to the network or faster access to the network. I should probably do just say quicker. Access to the network because you don't have to go through all the different states. You just go right away from disable to forwarding. This is good if you have a DHCP server um, that needs to give you an IP address, you can be just sitting there for 30 seconds, nothing happening, just waiting for spanning tree because you want to be connected to the network, get your IP and start running. Or if you're using the PXE option, which this is the option that allows you to, to boot your device from certain resources that are inside your network. You might have your image saved somewhere and you want to have access to it before booting your device or while booting your device. So you don't want spanning tree to stand in the way of, of your boot. 
You also have this second advantage here, which is that there is no TCN generated for access port. Uh, TCN is something that we're not going to insist on in this lesson because at the TCN level, we're not supposed to go this deep. But there is something that's called topology change notification that is sent every time there is a change on a certain switch. Let's say my switch has 24 ports and all the 24 ports play some role in my spanning tree um, algorithm. And if one of those port changes its state, goes from up to down, for example, the bridge or the switch is sending a topology change notification to the root bridge. And the root bridge will have to respond by sending a TCA or a topology change acknowledgement to say, hey, okay, I got that. And then it's going to include this information in the BPDUs and then send it to all the other um, bridges in our topology. So this is at the CCNP or CCI level. We don't have to go this deep, but just know that when there is a change on a port, the bridge sends the TCN. But if that port has port fast activated on it, there's no need to send a TCN. That's a very good thing because the, T the TCN is not necessary in that instance. If that port goes up or down, it doesn't change anything in our topology. So we don't have to let everybody know what's happening here. So that's why it's very important to have port fast enabled. And just like I said, when you are planning for your network, you know what ports you're going to connect to different switches. So all the other ports, just put them in port fast just activate port fast on those ports so you won't have any problem waiting or any problem sending TCN that are not necessary. And next we're going to talk about BPDU guard just a little bit. This is an option that's preventing a loop from happening because when you set port fast on a certain port or a certain interface, you don't expect the BPDU to come on that interface. Like in this case here with our topology in packet tracer, When we enable BPDU, oh, oh, when we enable port fast right here, it's because this is going to a server. We don't expect any BPDU to come in this way because nothing should be sending BPDUs. Servers don't send BPDUs, only switches. So if someone brings a switch in his, uh, in his cubicle and connect the switch to the, to the network, and then we detect a BPDU coming from this port, we should block this port right away. That's what BPDU guard does. When you, when you enable BPDU guard, this port is going to be blocked right away when it receives a BPDU. By the way, you need to notice that this port will still be sending BPDUs. If it's a designated port, it is a designated port, it will be sending BPDUs. Unless you disable that by enabling BPDU filter, which is another option that we're not gonna talk about. But if it's just regularly working, you should be sending BPDUs, but you shouldn't receive any BPDU. You might receive BPDUs, but if you don't have BPDU guard enabled, it might be a loop event right there. And that's not something that you want. Let's spend some more time on packet tracer here. If I want to enable port fast on all the ports on this switch, all I have to do is enable port fast at the global level. So I'll be here and I'll do config T, spanning tree, port fast default. This enables port fast on all the ports. And in this case, all these ports are still access ports. I didn't set up any trunking because this should be a trunk, but I didn't really set it up just for demonstration. So this will enable uh, port fast on all the ports. And look at this. Um, if I do show spanning tree summary, it says here that port fast default is enabled. BPDU guard default is disabled. If I enable BPDU guard default, what's gonna happen is that this port here is going to be disabled. It's going to be put in the error disabled state because we are going to receive a BPDU from this designated port, which will block it. Let me try that here. So if I do conf t and configure spanning tree, port fast, BPDU guard default, look at this. It's enabled and two seconds later, this one should go down. Yep, it's down because I'm not supposed to receive BPDU here. This one is still up because there's no BPDU coming in. And if we do show, um, show interface status, you can see that fast Ethernet zero slash one is in the error disabled state. 
this is happening because we shouldn't be receiving a BPDO. So to change that, what we have to do is go on this interface and disable port fast. T interface fast Ethernet zero slash one. What we're going to do is spanning tree port fast disable. Okay, this disables uh, port fast, and all we can do is do um, we can shut down the port and do no shut. The port will come up. I don't think we need to disable BPDU guard. It should be just going with port fast right away. So, yep, let's see. And uh, we have to wait for like 30 seconds to uh, for this to come up, but it should be coming up fine. So you can enable or disable port fast at the global level or at the interface level. All right, see, now it's up. It already received the BPDU and everything, and it's working fine because port fast is disabled on this port. And there's also another command that you need to know. When you enable port fast, when you do spanning tree port fast, oh man, I shouldn't should have done that, oh man. It's gonna be down again. <laughs> All right, so when you do that, it's going to enable port fast for access ports only. But if you want to enable port fast for, for trunk ports, for example, we have this port here going to the server. Let's say this is an ESXi host with thousands of virtual machines in different VLANs. So we want this port to be a trunk port so that all the VLANs can go through. So this is where you can enable port fast for a trunk. Then you need to do spanning tree, port fast, trunk. This will enable on this port here as a trunk because normally trunks should go to other switches but if you want to bring a trunk to an end device or to a server you should do port fast trunk to enable that interface uh, to enable port fast on that trunk interface so these are some commands that i just utilized um, not a while ago um, this is where you can enable uh, port fast globally on the whole switch and you can enable bpdu guard on the whole switch as well this is at the interface level you can enable port fast, you can enable port fast for the trunk that I just showed you, and you can enable BPDU guard as well. And this is how to disable port fast or to disable BPDU, uh, BPDU guard. All right, so I left you a link to uh, some resources on the Cisco website where you can read a lot on packet, I mean, on port fast and BPDU guard and all the other options if you want to, because I'm the kind of guy who always want to go beyond. So if you want to go beyond and read on uplink fast or backbone fast, all those things, you can go ahead and do that on that link and take your time to play with all of this in Packet Dresser to have a good understanding of it. And if you have any question, don't hesitate to go in the forum on kbtrans.com and ask your question there. Thank you for watching this. So if you are on YouTube, you can go on kbtrans.com forward slash ccna to have access to the whole course and if you are a professional you need to subscribe to this channel because there's more content coming that can help you in a career or if you want to start a career in it this is definitely a place to be and i'm going to share most of what i do here with you thank you so much for your time subscribe and like the video and i'll see you in the next one thank you and bye